Greg Birch. One of the things that FFL is doing, Sean Mike is doing, he's been doing it since I left FFL, is he's been going to all the different carriers and trying to force them to release all the Vantage One brokers because he was scared about the amount of agents that would leave. The only carrier that would really do that was Americo, their primary carrier. That's because of the relationship between Sean Mike and Americo's leadership. So they released all of the Vantage One brokers. Without going through them one by one, which is the normal way to do it. Everyone in Vantage One brokers, they released the entire hierarchy. Vantage Brokers does not have access to America. He has been trying to do Mutual of Omaha, which is not a part of this conversation, and I don't want Mutual of Omaha to be a part of it. He has been trying with all the main carriers. Some of them have been coming back and forth, and they almost did it, but they did it. There's a massive transition of agents leaving FFL. Sean Mike publicly has always stated that there are no contracts. Any agent can leave anytime they want. However, when I left and a lot of agents left with me, he stood. He refused to let our contracts go. He would not let them go. I had to wait six, six months. The six until months time frame from the last piece of business. What's been happening, all the agents that are leaving there, they still can't believe that FFL won't release them. So what they do, what they end up doing is they get upset and they're saying, hey, I don't want to have anything to do with FFL because they're liars. So they're going straight to the carrier and they're terminating their contract, waiting for the six months and then starting it back up. with the, They don't even want a possibility of any business being written through FFL. That's how bad this. However, this carrier just recently this week came out and said they have never seen anything like this in the industry. So many agents asking to have their contracts terminated from FFL to come to ADV1. They've never seen anything like this in the industry. They now have partnered with FFL and said, hey, any FFL agent leaving cannot go to ADV1, cannot go to Advantage 1 broker. That is completely illegal. And this carrier is American Amex. It's against the carrier contract that every single IMO has. They cannot make one carrier contract that says the agents from this company cannot go to this company. We will not approve it. That's completely business disruption. And that has everything to do with Sean Mike. Right. So he's he's after you guys completely. Oh, 100%. He is trying to stop this desperately. He's trying to stop this transition because we are changing things in the industry. Because he has, he has no honor. He doesn't keep his word. He has lied to agents multiplied like by telling them that they have their no contract, by saying that there's leads that are exclusive when they're not, and reselling all the leads, by making, by saying that they're not a lead company and they don't make money on leads, and they make hand over fist money on leads. Like he's been lying to agents and his lies are getting caught. People are starting to realize and they're leaving, but they don't want to be a part of it. And so he's desperately trying to stop our movement, which is just to be focused on agents and making sure agents are successful and taking care of them first. First and foremost, which is most important, being people of honor, doing what we say we're going to do and not lying to agents in order to dupe them. This is exactly what Sean Mike has been doing. So now he's got American Amicable and we are going after them legally. The conversation that we had a week or two ago, I posted on Mindy Rutstein's LinkedIn, like a rough transcription. I'm just going to read really quick. Let me get it. It's on LinkedIn. I I, I only post on LinkedIn. I said, former VP. You could see the LinkedIn when I've posted. There was a gentleman named Jerry Rutherford told me that he had a Facebook group. People were making pro and con comments about FFL in American Amicable canceled his contract. I put so much evidence here. Greg, I'm just going to read it very quick. You're going to tell me if I'm on the right track. Very rough in my Facebook message of conversation with former FFL VP. The VP agent got an FFL cease and desist and tells us that our posts are spot on. The VP agent promised to put more information in a more clear manner. Meanwhile, here is the rough summary. I'm listening. FFL tells agents they are not a lead company, but validates that legitimate lead vendors only get access. The managers are told to tell the agents this. Top dogs. Sean Mikey owns the company. Andrew Taylor is Sean's right-hand man. Mike Kilomet is from NAA and has a huge team, has about one quarter of all FFL agents under FFL. Mike invested in lead drill and owns a nice percentage. Sean Ruggiero runs advanced market sales, all IUL and annuity, all trading, all videos. Original Mayhouse, burned down, Mail Pro replaced. Now exclusive to FFL, the Mail Pro per lead basis to Mail Pro, then FFL resells via their CRM. Even if agent complains that lead resold, FFL still resells the lead. Sean Ruggiero is in charge of social media leads. Instant insurance, insurance leads. Lead. Instant insurance leads are sold to all integrity. A few people told me that. Instant insurance leads are sold to all integrity instant, partners. Instant internet leads are sold 
sold to other integrity partners. I literally had multiple agents from different companies compare leads that they bought at the same time and their leads were like identical by a large margin. They have a similar instant internet lead source. It's called something else like with Equus and NAA, uh, NAA, I believe access. I, I can't, I can't confirm whether or not NAA does. I know Equus does. Telesales, final expense company as part of integrity that also has access. They're sold okay, multiple times. The same exact data is sold multiple times. FFL is adding historical data and saying it is instant leads and selling them for $11. The CRM yep. is not part of the integrity deal. The CRM is on both Sean. Instant leads are bogus. Andrew Taylor has back-end access to CRM. I guess your estimation is 70 size cents is the actual cost of the lead. Instant internet leads are sold for $11, then $9, 30 days later, then seven, then five, then three. Obviously, if they're going to NAA and Equus, who knows what they're doing. Agent is not being told the lead is being resold. Uh, what's most interesting to me, found out later, is called a bounty lead. If you leave the company, they will go through your book of business and CRM. They will resell the data leads, especially Americo sales. Certain insurance companies you and I know have higher commissions and higher prices. They're easy to replace. Americo Sales says here they will be replaced. They sell the bounty leads for $5. Is that on target? Uh, I've, I've heard them called an integrity lead. I've heard them call it an integrity lead before. And they give them or a bounty lead back. or... After the bounty lead came out, because the bounty lead was announced and they publicly announced it. And I have a post of them announcing it. We pushed it out and said, hey, look at this. They're selling all your book of business. Whenever you leave or your agents leave, your book of, their book of business is being sold. Like, how in the hell is this okay? And they immediately pulled it down. And then they kept it very hushed, but they still do it. I have agents now that were on phone calls with higher ups that were told, oh, those, that, oh you mean the integrity lead. Referencing it as something else. And only certain people have access to it. Earlier you mentioned they're only giving access to these leads to people they trust. Well, that are like higher producers or people that they trust that they can let in on the secret that they feel won't build beans or say anything. It could be someone who's relatively new, but not too new. If they're making money and they're happy. If they're, yeah, if they're making game. money, they're making sales, they're a grinder and they fit into that culture, they probably are ones. I don't know how they're picking. I don't know who they're picking, but I do know that they're being sold. I've heard on calls they're being sold. I've had other agents confirm they're being sold. I've also had clients of mine that were contacted by FFL agents after I left left that were never a lead source. I just sold them. They were warm market people that I knew that I sold with Americo that were then contacted by FFL agents to sell them. And they never signed up on a lead source ever. They just only reason these... they bought was because I was an insurance and they knew me. The new agents seem to know that they bought Americo. All I know is that I had clients that were reached out to. I can verify this and I have the client's names. Like a month or two after I left FFL and my book of business, the people that I sold, they were trying to replace my book of business. Probably to put me on a vector because if I get on a vector and I can't get contracts or I lose my contracts elsewhere to get a vector it ruins my ability to go anywhere else encouraging a uh, churning or replacement especially America which I know in this business is overpriced if it's a, to a person over 60 years old or elderly person that should be construed as elder abuse which is four years in prison I know in the state of California because I looked it up online I'm not a lawyer I don't know and you, legally and you did Google be, it here's what I know if you have an elderly person and that constantly is being contacted by different agents within the same company because that lead is continuously being resold and all they're doing is they're replacing the policy over and over again it, is it renews the entire contestability period every single time and then when that person passes away if their contestability period hasn't been passed the insurance company will try to fight paying that off and then there will be people that don't get insurance money for whatever reason especially with the way that they do sales tactics over at FFL they teach people to write business and replace policy I know because I was there that's how they teach agents I get you. Yeah. To do. This is all, by the way, on LinkedIn. It's also on the messenger I sent because I sent now, you for everything I else. There's some other things that you said. There, there's some mistakes, small mistakes, but for the most part, that is accurate what you said. Andrew Taylor helped to get find MailPro. He told me so himself in a, in a phone call. He also told me that he had back end access to the CRM and he could pull leads whenever he wanted to. Chat on Facebook Messenger at the beginning of our conversation. This is probably what you wrote through Messenger. A lot of information I've co I have collaborates with the information that you have been posting. You asked me, do you know social insurance leads? 
You made a link to it. It is owned by Regario. MailPro is their mail house they own. Andrew Taylor is involved in security. You're, 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 tell you're, 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 slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. This is what I was just literally talking about. I need you to listen. You like jump a million miles a minute. Con Ruggiero helps create social insurance leads. That was the link I sent you. That has nothing to do with MailPro. That has nothing to do with Andrew Taylor. Those are two separate entities, so you can't combine them as one. MailPro is a mail house. They started. Now, MailPro does have Facebook leads now. They start off as a mail house and they're proprietary to FFL. The way that they have those leads is when they sell a lead on their CRM, they sell them on a buy per lead basis, which means they sell them at the cost of what it costs them because the company has to make a profit, a little bit over what it costs them to generate those leads by the amount of pieces of mail they're sending out. And then they resell it, I think a one month, three month, and a six month, I believe. It's, it's, it's been a while, it's, it's, but it's like an $8, $5, and a $3 lead that they resell over and over again in order to make a profit. I cannot confirm 1,000% that the CRM was not part of the integrity deal. I was told that in confidence. Okay. But I can't, I cannot confirm or deny. I wasn't there when they signed. So, I'll just mention um, what I wrote online. Andrew Taylor yeah. was on securing the deal. They tell agents they don't own it, but they do. They tell agents that they're not a lead company. And they never specifically say, we don't own it. They just say, well, we're not a lead company. They never outright say, we don't own MailPro. We have nothing to do with them. They just say, well, we're not a lead company. And it's a very passive aggressive way of not answering the question. If you look at Mindy Rutstein's post, gentleman from Lead Rilla came on and says, I found it. Lead Rilla. You know, he was trying to give the impression it's his. The guy that helped found it, his brother is an agent. He was under my kill list. When Lead Rilla was started, I had a conversation when they first started, and I was told by them that they got an initial investment by my kill to help start the lead company, to try to make a lead company that would be, that would help FFL. I don't think it was started in various ways. It was just like a business opportunity. Right after like, hey, I'll, I'll start this business. I'll start this lead company. But what's turned into is this cash grab to get agents to buy all these leads over and over again, and they're taking the data from these different internet lead sources like Leadrilla, social insurance leads. So when someone signs up as a lead for them, they take that data and they add it into the instant internet life lead data. So someone could sign up, go onto Facebook, see a social insurance lead ad, sign up on it, and then after they sign up on it, not only will they get sold as a lead for a social insurance lead, but that data will go into an instant internet life lead and it'll get sold again there. Will it be sold to all the other integrity companies? from Lee Drilla? I don't know if it's sold, sold to all the interior. I don't know if it's sold to them or if it's just sold to FFL. I don't know. I do know it gets but sold to the instant internet life lead because I had an I agent that tested them and they saw a social insurance lead and they were like, huh. And they signed up, they bought some leads and they signed up and they got themselves as a lead in social insurance lead. A couple of days later, they got a call from one of their agents who was like, hey bro, I just got you as a lead on my instant internet life lead. And it was all of the information he filled out on the social insurance lead. $11 instant internet lead. Are they being promised it's exclusive? Yes. They're being told it's exclusive. It's not being sold to anyone else. What they're saying is that these people have signed up multiple times. And so when they sign up online for one source, they sign up on another online source, they sign up on another online source, and that's why they're getting multiple calls. But that's bullshit. Okay, let me read the rest. I don't have 100% proof it is owned by Sean's. Only a couple of people know what's going on. Lead Rilla Digital Lead Company was started by Mike Killaman, who recruited one quarter of FFL agents. FFL has been collecting data for years and resells it over and over. The data is being resold over and over. I don't care about what the quarter of FFL agents it is or not. I don't care. I don't know how many agents he has. It doesn't matter. He's a large council member, a large agency within all of FFL. He didn't start. Wording is important. He did not start the gorilla. He invested right, money to help, it, to help it get going. If you want to take a look at what the conversation with the woman from Oregon who told me about the investigation of Idaho, you know, it's it's right below your post, post yeah. about our conversation. That's fine. That's fine. I'm not, I, don't, I confirmed those things for the most part. Anything that I need to fix, I, I said. Okay, so you have it. However, I still want to keep right, my name right. out of it for right now. There are a lot of agents right now that are coming over Advantage One Brokers and they're trying to get their AMAM contract and AMAM just stopped. You can literally put a post and saying, hey, it's just came in, there are multiple agents that have left FFL and left to go to Advantage One Brokers and trying to transfer their contracts over because FFL won't release them. They've decided to to terminate their contracts with specific carriers so that they don't have to write any business through FFL. And one specific carrier has come out and said they've never seen anything like this in the industry. And so they are stopping all transfers specifically and only that leave FFL to go to Advantage One Brokers. Are these agents able to go to another broker? 
broker besides Advantage One? If they went to another broker besides Advantage Brokers, they would be able to get American Amicable. It's just FFL to Advantage One Brokers. You cannot get contracted with Advantage One Brokers if you leave FFL. If they came from a different company or they did not have AMAM previously, we can get them contracted with AMAM. And what's the situation with America? I already said on the recording, Advantage One Brokers does not have access to America anymore. We haven't had it for months. This you, happened a long time ago. These are their two main partners. They write more business for Mutual of Omaha than they do AMAM. But, but Mutual of Omaha is so big, they, they're not going to play these games. Yeah. AMAM's not like a main core carrier. However, AMAM does have a lot of ties with all of Integrity because of North Star. There's a guy, I can't remember his name, who kind of runs all the telesales, all the organizations that do telesales and final expense telesales for all of Integrity. He has deep, deep, deep ties with American Amical, and Integrity is helping Sean Mike with that. They're basically throwing weight in order to try to stop what's happening because there's so many agents leaving FFL. They're bleeding agents. When you were with FFL, what was your position there? When I left, I was a senior vice president. Is that based on sales volume? Based on my team, what? my overall team sales volume. How many people did you have in your team? I had 45 writing agents, and I had about 100 that we're going through contracting and licensing. And these people were making sales, these 45 people? My overall annual premium for the, I said my last big month there, was around 400,000. That was right before you left. It was right around wow. 400,000. I think a little, little shy. I think it was like 389 or 390. I can't remember exactly. And the reason you left? I learned how to generate leads on my own. I learned how to do Facebook marketing and I learned how to do Google, YouTube marketing. I learned how to generate leads at a high level in a cheap fashion or, and also in a more expensive but higher intent fashion. I knew just by doing that, I started to learn what the internet life lead was and that it was being generated in a very cheap fashion. And if I were to guess, I would say to generate that lead probably costs less than a dollar cost per acquisition. They were pushing people buying those leads so hard. That's all of their messaging. It's all their marketing. It's like buy leads, buy leads, buy more leads, buy more leads. If you're not, if you're not running these leads, you're making a mistake. If you're not running these leads, you're, you don't know how to run business. And they would insult people if they didn't use these leads that they didn't sell. And they said that you, they weren't working hard enough. And they were just badgering agents. And I started to see it. And it was like my the veil was lifted when I realized how to actually generate leads on my own. I realized that they were making a lot of money off of these leads. That's why they don't Did care you see- if you replace policies. Because that's you think it's bad business. If they're replacing policies all the time, that's really, really bad business. That's a constant churn of chargeback. You can literally talk to just about any VP there. And if they're honest with their numbers, the chargeback ratio over there is about 40 to 50% of all policies that are written get charged back. Are they higher with America? Yeah, they are higher with America because that's, because that's what they most likely write. So that's what everyone's kind of forced to write. If you don't write that, then you're kind of talked down to and you're asked, why didn't you write it? Because all the bonuses are structured based off of America production. I started to see this and I started to realize what's going on. The agents that weren't so suitable for the business, because I speak to these people, they, they tend to lose money when they come in. Did you see that? Some of these 45 people that started with you, that some are losing money? Yeah, a lot of people. There's been thousands, thousands of agents that have went in debt just buying leads and not making any sales. Buying those internet life leads, being badgered to buy two thousand, three thousand dollars worth of leads, not making any sales, and then just told they weren't, they didn't work hard enough. And Andrew Taylor's famous saying would be, if you can't make a sale, then you should probably go work at McDonald's. If you're not willing to invest in your business and and drop a thousand to two thousand dollars worth of leads in a CRM, then you shouldn't be in business. Go go flip burgers at McDonald's. And that's how he talks to people. Did you go to a local office in your state for periods of time? Yeah, there was a there was a local office that I had. At the end, I did. I, they made a big office that was in Arlington, and I rented space out of because it was like a big building that had multiple office spaces and you could rent out space. Me and my team rented out four office spaces in that entire building. Like literally right after we rented it, the next month is when I left. And so my, I canceled my contract with them. And you were at level 145 commission? I was 135. Okay, so you, I looked at the grid. It said you had to do uh, 750000 to get to that level. And the people that you signed up, I guess, were level 100 or so, 110. The main thing that re- this is really is this churning and burning in elder abuse. That's that's where the Department of Insurances are going to get excited. The elder abuse of replacing policies for elder elderly people uh, is are a... You, I already, I already, I'm not, you cannot, you're not going to get me to say something recording no, and agree oh, I'm, to something. No, I'm... I'm I'm just saying, we've I'm already not, talked about this topic. Let's move to the next. I already said I can't say that. Okay. The other, I don't know. Correct. Legally, correct, I don't know. Correct. Okay. I'm just trying to say more interesting stuff. There's like, once that's done, like, what else is there? 
<laughs> that's all it is. There's nothing else there. Like that's, Honestly, that's, what needs to be that's looked, so what huge. Be I don't need it. Is, what needs to be looked at is their CRM. You need to look at the actual data of how the leads are being generated. You need to look at the pathways and all the lead vendors and like how many, how these leads are being distributed and sold because that's where the criminal activity is. I promise you, if they find that, they get someone looks at that information, that's the key. And then also them wrong arming all these carriers. That's why I'm telling you, like, I'm going to say this again. I need you to listen. Go back to this recording. You need to go put in what I told you specifically to type out about American Amazon.